Du, 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 du. Du, 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 When you search for an image of a rainbow, this is the kind of thing that comes up. Pictures of rainbows divided into the seven classic colours. Of course, on a real rainbow, there are no actual divisions, just one continuum of colour. And while we naturally divide things into boxes in order to understand them, sometimes these boxes start to be challenged. And there's one area where this has been happening a lot recently. There are now, according to Facebook, 71 gender options. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male with the exception of some of his sperm cells. There's been a societal standard, one that's biologically based, for millennia, which we've now changed, and we're punishing people who don't agree. The words male and female have existed throughout history, throughout the world. They refer, men are people who have penises, women are people who have vaginas. It's as simple as that. What these commentators are defending is the binary model of sex and gender, the idea that there are only two boxes, male and female. As alternatives to this model have appeared, these critics have attacked them, seeing them as against biology, nature and human history. It all adds up to a black and white view of the world, which rather than helping us understand people, boxes us in. And it turns out all of it is a lie. Let's start with human biology and the claim that men are people who have penises and women are people who have vaginas. This is the idea at the heart of the binary model of sex and gender. There's two boxes, and based on your genitalia, everyone could be sorted into one of them. It's an important idea to test, because if it's true, then the statements of trans people or non-binary people can be ignored. You are whatever bits you were born with. To many, this just seems like common sense, because they think we're all born with male or female genitalia. But in fact, that's not true. I'm talking about something called intersex. Intersex people are people born with sex characteristics that do not fit typical binary notions of male or female bodies. This includes a wide range of natural bodily variations, some obvious from birth, others not apparent until puberty, and others not physically apparent at all. It's not a phenomenon that's widely known about, and that's part of the reason why people think it's rare, yet it's estimated that at least 1 in 100 babies is born this way, making it as common as red hair. To explain what's going on with intersex, let's start at the beginning, the beginning of where we all start off. From conception to about seven weeks, the sex organs of males and females pretty much look the same. In fact, you might say we all start off intersex. It's from this point a person usually heads down either the typical male or female path. And actually, this common heritage explains a few things. For example, this line here. Instead of sealing up to form a scrotum, at seven weeks old, that could have started turning into labia and a vagina. And check out this diagram of the clitoris. See this? Several inches of spongy tissue, a mushroom-shaped head on top that fills with blood and erects during sexual excitement. Remind you of anything? Yeah, the clitoris and penis both start off in the same place. What's happening with intersex, or at least some types of intersex, is that the different parts of the sex organs develop in different ways. So for example, this area might develop into a penis, while this part, which might have been a scrotum, becomes labia and the vagina. All this means that while you might try and divide everyone into two boxes based on genitalia, you're left with lots of people who don't fit into either. Well, if not genitalia, what about chromosomes? As we all learnt in high school biology, and as many commentators like to remind us, women have XX chromosomes and men have XY. How about this as a way to box everyone? But chromosomes aren't as simple as you might think either. Take these people who have an intersex condition called AIS, for example. Looking at them, you might expect their chromosomes to be XX. Yeah, actually, they're XY. And how about this? Did you know about 1 in 20,000 men has no Y chromosome, instead of having two Xs? This means that in the US alone, there are at least 7,500 men without a Y chromosome. People can come with all sorts of combinations of chromosomes. And in fact, this article from the prestigious science journal Nature tells the story of a woman who had both XX and XY cells, probably as a result of merging with a twin embryo when she was in the womb. So again, try and sort everyone based on this characteristic and you're left with exceptions. The final option is to box people based on their sex cells or gametes. This is the approach biologists take, defining male as those animals within a species that produce smaller sex cells and female as those that produce larger sex cells. But this approach has an obvious problem as well, as lots of humans don't produce these cells through infertility or old age. Yet we don't say these people can't be called men or women. Supporters of the binary model want to reduce everything to the biological facts. 
But as we've seen, whether you look at genitalia, chromosomes or sex cells, sorting everyone into just two boxes based on the biological facts is difficult. All of this is why more and more scientists are moving past the binary model, as in this diagram from the journal Nature, to visualise human sex not as two choices, male and female, but as a spectrum, ranging all the way from what is typically thought of as male to typically female, with many amazing variations in between. Okay, next, what about the idea that we should support the binary model of sex and gender because of what happens in nature? Well, to start with, there's lots of other species of mammals apart from humans where intersex has been recorded. And actually, in some species, it's not something that just affects a minority, but rather it appears nature has made intersex features the new normal. In this species of mole, for example, all the females have ovotestes, meaning they have a mix of ovarian and testicular tissue. For whales and dolphins, the male sex organs appear feminized, streamlined inside a genital slit. And in this species of hyena, all the females have structures that look like penises, through which they urinate, copulate, and give birth. As well as intersex, there's hermaphroditism, which is when animals have both sets of sex organs and can make both sperm and eggs. Incidentally, this is not something that's been recorded in humans, so although in the past this word was used to describe intersex people, it's actually inaccurate, and for many offensive. The reason this is a fascinating phenomenon is because animals like this completely define the binary way of seeing the world, jumping between the boxes of male and female. Sometimes they do it throughout their life, other times it's just once, going from female to male, or from male to female. And yes, this category includes clownfish, which means if Finding Nemo had been accurate, when Nemo's mum died during the Barracuda attack, his dad would have switched gender to female. Far from the binary model being the one true natural way of doing things, the truth is that nature in its evolutionary powered love of diversity is actually full of alternatives and variety. So far we've looked at human biology and nature, but this next area, human history, is especially interesting because it highlights something new. You see, as well as a variety in sex, people's physical bodies, there's also a lot of variety when it comes to gender. That is the identity they know themselves to be regardless of their physical body. Indeed, it's this area which has caused a lot of the recent controversy. Looking through history, there's lots of examples of diversity in terms of physical sex. This creation myth from the Sumer civilization, for example. But there are also lots of descriptions of other genders to male and female. For example, on this pottery from ancient Egypt. Greek myth is not only full of sex changes, men changing to women and vice versa, but many gods who are both male and female, not least Hermaphroditus who gave us the word Hermaphrodite. In the East, one of the forms of Lord Shiva is emerging of male and female, the Kama Sutra describes three genders, and the Buddhist Vinaya has four main gender categories. And today, across the world, there are many groups often thought of as simply gay or simply trans, but who often defy easy classification when it comes to gender. The desire to escape the binary model of sex and gender is as old as human history. In all the areas we've looked at, whether it's human biology, nature or history, we can see alternatives to the two boxes we're familiar with. Yet the binary model and its black and white way of seeing things doesn't just limit our understanding, it can actually do real harm. The best example of this is in medicine, where intersex conditions are often known as DSD, Disorders of Sexual Development. To call something a disorder is to suggest that not only is it not normal, but it needs fixing. And for intersex children, what that often means is surgery. Now it's true there are a few intersex conditions that represent an urgent medical problem for babies, but most don't. Take for example a baby born with a very small penis, known as micropenis. Because of the toxic idea that only someone with typical male anatomy can be a man, for many years the standard thing for doctors to do was to surgically remove the penis, even though there was nothing medically wrong with it, and raise the child a girl. And the same for girls with clitoromegaly, a large clitoris. Again the answer was, and still often is, surgery, with sometimes the clitoris being removed completely. The problem isn't medical, it's that the child's body doesn't fit clearly into one of the two boxes of the binary model cosmetically offensive in the words of one piece of medical literature. In the United States in 2012, there were over 1,700 intersex surgeries on children under five years old. And another recent estimate put the number of annual clitoral reduction surgeries in the US at 139. In response, many have been arguing for surgery to be delayed until children are older, when they can choose for themselves whether to have surgery or not. And there are a few signs of progress. Today, for example, babies with micropenis are now usually raised as boys and treated with hormones rather than surgery. And in April 2015, Malta became the first place to ban medically unnecessary operations, and some other places have made positive moves in that direction too. 
Hopefully change will continue, but this issue shows that for intersex people at least, the binary model isn't just a poor way of understanding the world, it has harmed the world, and often it's them that have felt the pain most. This film has been about one of the most important ideas in our society, and one so fundamental that supporters feel confident dismissing experiences that conflict with it. However, the foundations of the binary model are weaker than many know, and we need to realise that when an idea like this is held too rigidly, it can do real harm. There's nothing necessarily wrong with categories and putting things into boxes, it's how we try and make sense of the world, and for many, not least many trans people, the box of male and female is important. Also, we don't yet have a settled alternative to the binary model, but people are working on it, and whatever it looks like, if it's going to be useful theory, they should be interested in new experiences, new evidence, not used to tell people that they don't exist. Ultimately, if the boxes we've created aren't helpful, then we don't have to keep them. In a world of colour, you don't have to stick to black and white. So, whatever your sex, wherever you are on that spectrum, and whatever gender you are, male, female, or however you see yourself, Remember there are alternatives to the black and white world we've created. Nature loves a rainbow of colourful variety, and we should too. Hi everyone, I hope you found that interesting. I just want to say a massive thank you to the campaigners and academics that helped me research this film. I put a link to all the sources down below so you can check them out. And finally, I don't currently make a lot of these films, so if you do want to hear about it when I do, there's an email list you can sign up to below. Okay, otherwise, thanks for watching.